Uh, but the number of occasions on which this happens is so rare uh, that it's a travesty. Not everybody can be in charge. If everybody's in charge, we don't have an organization. We have mayhem. I mean, I'm sure uh, the, the newest uh, recruit in the Navy wants to be the flag officer. Hey. At sea, it's very clear who's in charge. Now, this morning, OK, I find you down in your cabin, asleep in your bunk at a quarter past 11. This is not the first time that this has happened, has it? No, Hux. Now, I'll tell you what's going to happen now. Now, there'll be a 667B road on you, all right? That's fine. If it happens the next time, the next level it goes to then is he'll be speaking to the captain. Of course. All right? And it's going to affect his wages, number one, and it'll affect your future career. Nobody asked you to come here, all right? You came here of your own accord. This is a voluntary Navy, OK? So you can go at any time. You understand? Yes, Fox. Because, OK, if it happens again, you know where you're going. Yes, Fox. Understood? Yes, Fox. Right then. During a long patrol, the pressure can build on the road. Uh, well, this is an absolute low point of the job, apart from the hours. Like, that's nothing compared to this. Living at home with your wife? Yeah, argue. Imagine living on board with 41 fellas for three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Eating with them, sleeping with them, and everything else. Jesus, do you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, it's long going on. with 40 fellas. Yeah. You still find fellas picking up on mannerisms as well, which, you know, I mean, small things, yeah. Something that uh, your, your wife probably wouldn't take any notice or doesn't say anything about, but, you know, small things in the best. You have 12 fellas sitting in the best eating yeah. or, or sitting down uh, drinking tea or something. Dogs, just things. something that might be slurping and you might have a habit of, or something <laughs> like that, you know? Because you have to, it just yeah. gets into your head, you just, just have to shut down and say, I, I don't hear it. Because if you, you know, if you turn around and say, would you ever cop on? Yeah. You could have a brawl. <laughs> Especially if fellas run the low wave, you know? By far the most difficult job is serving at sea during a storm. During the worst conditions, these men and women go out to sea, normally to rescue someone. Paul Ryan, the longest serving man on board, with almost 30 years in the Navy, remembers the Fastnet tragedy. It was a storm that came out of nowhere in 79. Came out of nowhere. It wasn't forecasted by either BBC or the Irish Met Service. It, it came up from the south. And at the time, you had uh, the Fastnet race was going on from Coast to the Fastnet. 330 boats in the race from Plymouth to the Fastnet were scattered today over a vast area. As we flew over, a gale force 10 wind was howling across the Atlantic. We spotted this boat off Kinsale, its mast broken in two and motoring for a safe harbour with its sail wrapped loosely around the boom. They were caught in the middle of it and we were tasked to go get out there and uh, at the time try and rescue you know, these people. They were, they, were in, they were in a lot of trouble. A lot of them drowned time the most important thing for us was to try and save people which we did the Navy did it at the time and we also were involved in, in uh, just destroying the boats which was sad when you see a boat that's lifeless and uh, it can't function anymore it's overturned and you do have to sink it you know uh, and it goes to, to Davy Jones's locker to say that's sad as well you know if somebody is in trouble on the ocean you will do your damnedest to go and help if you can. The crew of the Roisin are all too aware of how powerful the sea can be. The situation uh, at the, towards the end of 2004 where we were actually sheltering in, in very bad conditions in Donegal Bay uh, when, we, when we heard a mayday that there was a Canadian submarine after getting into trouble 100 miles off the northwest coast. We subsequently found out that yes, there was a fire on board and the submarine was, after coming to the surface, to, to vent the smoke and that.